I know it sounds overwhelming, but it's not just me saying it now. This is a college professor who thinks you're special. And there's a whole world of people out there who will agree with him. I'll have to think about it, Miss Christie. What about my family? I will talk to them. Of course, if you really aren't interested, you can write to Father McLeod and tell him you appreciate the offer, but you simply cannot take him up on it. Maybe I should do that. I didn't know of a single person in Asheville who wouldn't have jumped at the opportunity Rob was being offered. And none of them had his talent or his desire to learn. Rob Allen had said no. But it was his father's voice I heard. Miss Christie, you was hired to come up here and teach our youngins how to read and write. Not to put ideas of big city colleges in their heads. This was not my idea, Mr. Allen. Father McLeod read your son's story and saw his talent. What he saw was a whip-smart mountain boy he could turn into a Catholic. Now, I know what they won't do. Come in here and take our youngins and make them into idolaters. Now, do you think anyone can change Rob's mind once it's made up? Lord, no. He's stubborn as a mule. I know my own boy. He gets his head set on something. It's... Look. Supposing he takes this examination and don't pass. When he lost that writing contest, boy disappeared for an entire day. Found him down on the creek bank at sundown, bawling like a girl. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. He can do it this time. I'm sure of it. Well, I ain't so sure. Look, Missy, this meal's been good to me and my family. Rob can work it, and it'll be good to him and his. Now, what more can a man ask for? Why don't you ask him? Rob ain't like us. He might not belong here. We don't know. I know all that. And I don't want to hear no more about it. Good day, Missy. Wait. I never asked you for nothing in my whole life. But I am asking you now. You're a good man, Bob Allen. You're smart. You're where Rob gets his thinking ways. But that soft part of him, part that makes him want to follow a daydream, that comes from me. You might not remember, but I used to want to marry a tinker, carry my doodads in a sack from mountain to mountain. But I married you and the mill, and I ain't regretting it, because it was my choice. But if my boy wants to be a tinker man, or a rider man, or a dang idolater in New York City, well, then I say you best get out of my boy's way, or he will hate you for it. He ain't gonna hate me. <laughs> then I will. All right, Mary. But if I let him take this uh, examination, you got to do one thing for me. You got to quit jiggling that baby on your hip before its head pops off. I best get supper on. Would you stay, Miss Christie? I would be honored, Mrs. Allen. I can't fight her when she gets that way. It's wildcat, you know. That's why I married her. <laughs> Just the examination. That's all I'm agreeing to. The next weeks flew by. I used every free hour I had to work with Rob on the material he needed to know for the test. He was a quick study but very hard on himself. What teaching he had had before I arrived had been sporadic at best. There was a lot to cover. 
And I worked hard to keep him from being discouraged. But education wasn't a priority in these mountains. Rob's father had allowed him to prepare for the test as long as he continued to work in the mill. Rob was being pulled in every direction. Here. My job was to keep him on track. Central plane. Well, I'm waiting for work, Miss Kristen. Go. Sorry. Rob, we were supposed to meet at 6.30. Sorry, Miss Christie, I slept late. I know you're tired, but we only have a few days left. But it just feels so hopeless. There's so much to learn. Who is the most educated man you know? Doc McNeil, I guess. All right, then. Don't you think Dr. McNeil felt the same way when he was getting ready to go to college? I don't know. Well, he did. He was scared. He was the first person in Cutter Gap to go to college, and he was afraid he was going to be the first person in Cutter Gap to fail college. But Doug McNeil's smarter than I am. Who says? He just knew what he wanted, and he went after it. What do you want, Rob? I want to be a writer. All right. Then let's get back to work. We still have half an hour before school starts. One, two, one, two, and through and through. The vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kalu kale. He chortled in his joy. Was brillig, and the slidy toads did gyre and gimble in the wave. And mimsy were the borrow groves, and the mome raths outgrave. It don't make no sense. Yeah, it does too. Somebody killed something, that's for sure. What's it supposed to mean, Miss Christie? Who says it has to mean anything? It's a nonsense poem. But why write something if it don't mean nothing? Perhaps Lewis Carroll enjoyed the sounds of his words even more than their meanings. I like it. It's almost like music. There's something kind of brave and proud about it. There is, isn't there? Miss Huddleston, children. I estimate I outrode the rain by about 20 minutes all the way from Catalici. All right. Um, you best all hurry on home, OK? Class dismissed. Students at Catalina, you've sent their self portraits. From now on, little Burl will know what his correspondent looks like. It's nice. Miss Christie, my mama baked this gingerbread last night. I saved mine for you. Oh, that's very sweet, Sadie. Thanks. Miss Christie, will you go over my mathematics homework with me? I couldn't figure out one of the problems. If you can figure it out. You always do, Zadie. Right now, I have to help Rob with his test, but if you still need my help tomorrow, then just see me at lunchtime. Rob, we have to talk about chemical reactions. I could look at that schoolwork, Sadie, if you likes. It don't matter. <laughs> 